Good afternoon. My name is Belinda Flores and I'm with South Coastal AHEC. Um, it's my pleasure to do a presentation for you. Um, for the Head Start staff, thank you for everything that you do. I want to thank Dr. Jones for the opportunity and her staff for allowing me to um, help uh, present this um, PowerPoint. So today we're going to talk about medication administration in early education and child care settings. Um, our sources are from um, Colorado, New Jersey, North Carolina, and West, and West Virginia um, on, their, um, on their guidelines for medication administration. So know that we did borrow this curriculum from them. This is module one. In module one, um, during module one, we're going to identify different types of medication, why medication is given, how it is given, how to store it, prepare it, different ad, uh, administration techniques. And then, of course, supporting good documentation in medication administration and also recognizing and responding to adverse reactions to medications. And then also having the appropriate policies about medication administration and then making sure that they are implemented. Again, a disclaimer, this curriculum is for, um, educate, uh, it provides education to personnel in child care settings who give medication to children but are not licensed health professionals. It does not substitute for the written policies and medical professional uh, medical guidances that are out there. And um, also actual care must be based on the child's clinical presentation, the healthcare professional's orders, parental guidance, per personal, personnel experience and training, and the policy of your facility. So each program must review state laws, regulations, and resources, and we're to adapt them accordingly to um, those that apply to us. So what's going to be covered, again, typical and routine, routine medications for short-term use, medications taken on a regular basis for chronic health conditions, and emergency medications. What's not going to be covered in this instructional program is special medications like injectables or rectal medications, um, some clinical ex, uh, explanations on several conditions, like if we are going off on tangents um, or extreme um, trying to treat, we're not here to treat, we're just providing um, the medication that the child needs in order to for them to be safe. And then if it's an emergency, um, being able to, to contain it or, or monitor it until um, the emergency personnel gets there. Um, also, not being covered in this program will not be caring for uh, children with special needs or dietary issues or restrictions or supplements um, for allergies or other medical conditions. Though these are very important topics, these will not be covered in today's program. So again, module one, we're gonna do an introduction and reasons to give medication, go through state regulations, and then talk about who's responsible for what, and then types of medications. So why give medication in child care? Um, so what do you think? Some reasons may be to prevent illness, like a barrier cream to prevent diaper rash, to release symptoms. For example, if somebody is um, running a fever, or having a problem, maybe to relieve some of those symptoms, um, maybe to reduce fever for short-term controlling cure, such uh, for short-term like an antifungal cream for a fungal diaper rash or albuterol for wheezing or anti-seizure medications in a long-term, for long-term use or chronic use. So why give medication in child care? We wanna maintain the health of the child. Um, we want to maintain the health of the child so that the child can come to our facilities and be ready to learn. I know right now we're having many barriers. There's different things that can prevent children from being there in the facility or being present even though they're, they're there, but their mind may be somewhere else. Maybe they don't feel well, that kind of thing. So we want to allow a child who's not actively ill to attend programs. And we also wanna comply with the laws, regulations, and best practices. We want to give the child the best they can to be at their very best. So we wanna do our part to maintain that they are there ready to learn. 
So when should medication be given? Medication should be given at home, especially we will talk about this throughout the presentations. The first medication, first dose should be given at home. If at all possible, medications should be given at home by parents or guardians. Uh, prescribers, prescribers should minimize um, the number of doses given to a child at a child care facility. So the least amount of uh, medication that we can give in the child care facility, the better we want children to be able to take their meds at home with their parents or guardians. So some of the regulations for state licensing is um, seek to ensure basic health and safety parameters um, are minimal standards for license programs to operate legally. That's Those are state licensing regulations. For best practice standards, we want to optimize standards to strive forward. Um, we want to set best practices um, such as caring for our children. This is one of the publications. So what does the ADA law say? The ADA law says that centers have to make re reasonable modifications to their policies and practices to integrate children, parents, and guardians with disabilities into the, their programs. So centers have to make reasonable modifications um, so that children with disabilities, um, their parents and guardians are able to participate in their programs. So how about liability? What is liability? Liability is something for which one is liable or we have a responsibility, a debt, an, app, an obligation. That is the definition for liability. For, so child care providers are more, more likely to administer medication than perform CPR in a child care setting. So we are... Um, responsible if a medication is to be given at the center. We're responsible that everything was taken care of, the right dose, right time, right route, you know, these kinds of things. So we want to make sure that we are um, administering that medication safely um, to the right child. So um, again, it we have to go through a training I think it's once a year for your program. So again, we want to review liability insurance for any stipulations related to medication administration. So we want to make sure that everybody understands what the rules and regulations are when administering medication. So responsibility triangle. So think about a triangle. You're looking at the triangle, child being in the center, parent being the tip of the triangle, health professional being on the other end, and child care provider being on the other end. So this responsibility triangle is taking care of the person in the center of this triangle, which is the child. Remember, it's everyone's responsibility at the points of this triangle to do their best to make sure, to ensure that the child is well taken care of. Everybody works together to, for the best outcome. So we're going to start with the parent, the top of the triangle, the parent or guardian responsibilities. Their responsibility is to make sure that the child has regular checkups and is up to date with immunizations. They complete, communi uh, they complete communication about child's symptoms and health status. For example, they need to make us aware. Perhaps the child already had a small reaction to that medication in the past. They need to communicate that with, to us. Um, they need to consult their child's healthcare provider, professional about diagnosis and care. So they need, if a child needs is under treatment or has symptoms that need treatment, um, it is their responsibility to seek out that healthcare professional um, so that they can treat their, their child. We, uh, the parent is also, or guardian is um, responsible for being compliance with the medication policies and completion of forms. If forms are not completely filled out with a signature, um, we cannot administer medication. Everything has to be completed. Communication with healthcare professionals about the childcare setting um, also is the responsibility of the child. Pardon, the parent. Just checking to see if y'all were awake. So um, the responsibilities for the parent and guardian continue. Asking the healthcare professional whether 
Um, medication can be given at home um, and preferably at home and not in childcare. So can we give it in the morning before they go? Can we give it when they get home from school? That kind of thing is best. So it's their responsibility to ask that. Um, it's the responsibility to provide properly labeled medication and provide appropriate measuring devices. We can't just go by, well, it's a teaspoon, we'll just grab a teaspoon. No, we have to go with appropriate measuring devices when we're going to administer medication to a child. Providing up-to-date emergency contact phone numbers. I have had the, the privilege of presenting this um, this module and this training um, for a few years now for uh, the health health uh, Head Start pardon. And I heard how a parent had not given any numbers. And then when the parent was finally found, they were like, well, I'm not leaving work. I'm going to, you know, stay at work. So the uh, member of the agency had to be there with the child. So it's very important that the parent provide up-to-date emergency contact phone numbers and emergency contacts for that child just in case of emergency we hope that it's never we had never have to use those numbers but if we do then those numbers are available going back to the parents responsibility or guardians response guardians responsibility of picking up the child as well promptly picking up their child when notified of illness is their responsibility arranging for backup care is also their responsibility working constructively with child care providers to determine when it is appropriate to care for their child my, uh, during a mild illness. Again, these are all responsibilities of the parent or guardian. Now, the child care provider responsibilities, okay? Um, so the child care provider responsibilities, careful periodic monitoring of health records, like their history, physical immunization screenings, are those up to date? Making sure that those are up to date is the uh, health child care provider responsibilities. Uh, practicing daily health checks, um, also the responsibility. Having and communicating clear policies on medication, exclusion and readmittance, um, also. Maintaining good hygiene practices, especially right now with COVID, we've got to maintain very good hy hygiene practices. Uh, promptly communicating with parents or guardians about their child's symptoms. Uh, using available resources for health consultation and obtaining training about medication administration, which we are doing right now. Um, Continuing with now the healthcare professional, so the doctor, the MP, the PA, whoever is uh, treating the child, their responsibilities is to complete all child care, care health forms legibly. So they've got to make sure you need to know who the doctor is for them to sign. You need to be able to read um, what doses are, 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 or what instructions have been given for that child and the medications that were given. Um, it is their responsibility as well to discuss medication needs with parent or guardian, and if needed, with child care providers, um, if parental permission is obtained. Adapt medication schedules to meet the needs of children in child care and limit the number of doses that need to be given in child care. Again, we want most medication to be given at home. If if last kind of resort is we'll give them at, at the centers, but we want them to be given at home. Provide guidance and education as requested. Promote disease prevention and good health practices. Be accessible to child care staff for questions and concerns about their patients with parental per permission. Um, there could be a, ch a child care health consultant. If there is, this is a trained health care professional who provides consultation and technical assistance on health issues in child care. Um, child care facilities can request consultation from professionals with special expertise as well. So types of medication. 
There's prescribed medication, which is the RX. There's the over-the-counter, OTC, and non-traditional. There's brand name and generic. There's oral, which they take by mouth, topical, which is, you know, applied to the skin, or inhaled, right? Maybe like a, a, a albuterol inhaler type of thing. <clears throat> so prescription medication can only be prescribed by an authorized healthcare professional and is dispensed by a pharmacist. Um, there are some medications that are called controlled substances. These con controlled substances have special rules because they can be addictive, they can be more dangerous than others, and it has to be um, labeled. Um, sample medication also must be properly labeled. Mind you, if parents brought you a baggie and says this is your share, no. The parents need to no uh, notify their healthcare professional that two, if medication is to be given at the center, then two bottles need to be given so that the amount that needs to be get, given at the center will be um, in the bottle for the for the child that um, for that medication that's going to be given at the center and then another bottle that's going to be given at home. You have to have everything labeled. There will be no baggies. There'll be no, well, the doctor said. There'll be no over-the-counter. Um, your center does not um, give over-the-counter medications. It's just prescribed. Let's just say, though, that the doctor does prescribe Tylenol, then it needs to be a prescription. You have to have a bottle for it and the, the instructions on how to give it. The, the parent cannot just bring a bottle of Tylenol and say, hey, the doctor also said if they have, you know, a fever or hurting, then give them this. No, it, everything has to be labeled um, from the pharmacy and prescribed by that provider. Over-the-counter medication, again, this is a med uh, these are medications that can be purchased without a prescription, vitamins, maybe, maybe herbal medications, um, homeopathic medications, sunscreen, insect repellent, um, non-medicated diaper cream often have the same regulations. So we have to make sure that um, that everything again is labeled if it is by a provider to be administered at a center. If not, over-the-counter medications cannot be um, prescribed, cannot be, um, I'm sorry, not prescribed, but uh, given to the, to the child, cannot be um, just, well, mom said, you know, that kind of thing. There's gotta be written orders from a provider. There's gotta be all the paperwork in place and signed. And there's got to be a specific medication for that child with the child's name and, and dosage and, and how often to, to administer that kind of thing. So again, some more over-the-counter medication would be like a fever reducers or pain relievers or um, antihistamines or cortisone cream, cough syrups, nose drops, all these types of things. Maybe something for their stomach like... Um, uh, if they're having gastrointestinal problems, a Pepto, that kind of thing. Again, um, no over-the-counter medications unless the over-the-counter the over the counter medication has been prescribed by the provider and there's specific instructions for the child. Again, we talked about brand name and generic medications. Brand name, again, could be like Advil, and then the generic could, could be... Um, Let's go with Tylenol and acetaminophen and uh, uh, Advil, ibuprofen. There you go. Sometimes it le it goes. So um, again, the brand name being Advil, the 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 generic being ibuprofen, uh, Tylenol being the brand name, the generic being acetaminophen. But again, um, uh, over the counter. Uh, medications are not going to be um, given unless they have been prescribed by the provider. Also needing to make sure, you know, sometimes we get so busy, so rushed, you know, so many children, so many things to do, you know, sometimes we don't have enough help or that kind of thing, you know, maybe some, they're, they're running around, whatever it may be, when given medication, we need to go to a 
quiet place and it's the only thing we're doing. We have to focus on that. We have to focus on what we're doing and why? Because we want to avoid mistakes or confusion. Many names sound kind of similar. Zantac, Zyrtec, you know, one uh, reduces acid um, in the stomach like Zantac. Zyrtec is an antihistamine. So we want to make sure that we don't get anything confused, mix up, you know, give one instead of the other, that kind of thing. Um, Bacitracin, which is an antibiotic cream. Bactrim, which is an oral antibiotic. So again, when we're giving medication, we have to focus at the issue at hand and just do that. And I, I get it, you know, especially us females, we tend to multitask. We're doing all kinds of things, you know, all at the same time. We want to make sure that we stop and focus on what we are doing and do that one thing. Believe it or not, our minds, our brains were not set up to do, to do so many things. Not with the computer, we have all these windows up and everything. We were, our brains function the best when we do one thing, take care of it and move on to the next. So especially when giving medication, administering medication, that's what we want to do do that one thing. So there is a video and I'm not sure, I'm gonna skip over the video. I'm hoping that they will add the videos at the end that I would get, will give clarif get clarification on that as well. So forms of medication, let's talk about oral. <clears throat> oral uh, medications can come in tablets or capsules when the tablets, when it's a tablet, um, you can they can be coated or uncoated. You swallow it whole. Chewables must be chewed, not swallowed whole. Scored, you know the scored ones that have the little line in the middle? Those are able to be cut in half. But if there's no line in the middle, those should never be split. Those tablets should never be split. Capsules, capsules should never be be uh, there for, for swallowing. They should never be crushed or shooed. They should not be um, sprinkled unless the healthcare professional has said to open it up and sprinkle it. But other than that, we follow the mode of administration that is instructed to us to give. So liquid forms of medication, just oral, again, suspension, um, dissolved medications in liquid may, must be shaken before pouring, usually meet, uh, needs um, refrigeration. Syrups, syrups are sweetened liquids that contain dissolved medications. So they put, maybe the medication's very bitter, so they've dissolved it in the a sweetened liquid to make it uh, taste better. Elixirs, elixirs are sweetened liquids also, in, but they're diluted in alcohol base. Um, which helps dissolve the medication. So it contains, sorry, it contains dissolved medication in there also. So it is a mixture. So elixir is an alcohol base with some sweetener. Syrups, it's just that sweetened liquid that's added to the medication to help uh, the child uh, swallow it better. And then the suspensions, again, usually you need to be refrigerated, um, need to be shaken because they may sit, you may see the different colors, need to be shaken before administered. Um, some other forms of oral medication is sublingual that is placed under the tongue and they melt or there's the melting strips and tablets that also um, you put in your mouth and they'll start to melt. There's also gums and gels. They're not as popular um, as other forms of oral medications. Topical medications, to talk about topical, that means that we're going to either apply it to the skin like a patch or a cream. There's also um, ear uh, drops that go in the ears, the nose, the eyes, or sprays in the nose and throat. Again, when we talk about topical creams or ointments, they're all for external use. Um, you're applying it to either maybe a rash or skin problems, that kind of thing. Or maybe again, if it's for the, that's topical for the skin, but if it's a spray or um, 
something for, drops for the eye. So again, making sure that we're very clear on how we're supposed to administer this medication. Um, some uh, types of uh, medication also are medications that we inhale, right? Um, so they're for breathing or inhaling the drug because you wanted to get it into the respiratory tract. So many times it's um, an inhaler, right? Or a nebulizer, when the nebulizer is the one that you attach to a machine, right? And it's that mist, that ne nebulizer. Sometimes there's a powder or sometimes there's a spray uh, that's for the, the nose or for the throat, but most times we're gonna deal with inhalers. Uh, many times for the children, there'll be a spacer, right? So when they puff, they can inhale it because you want to maximize um, that drug getting into that respiratory tract. Um, uh, that's the type of medication, the type that you're going to inhale. There's also injectables. That's another type of medication, injectables. Uh, many times with injectables, we're talking about somebody that maybe has diabetes and they may have to take uh, insulin. We're also talking about uh, somebody that maybe is severely, um, uh, has a reaction to somebody to something, um, has a very bad uh, allergy. So we have EpiPens or EpiPen Junior available um, for those uh, for those children. And again, um, that will be very specific to that one child and the doctor or provider will have sent specific instructions for that, for those, uh, these children that will need these types of injectables. Um, there's a separate training for this, um, for injectables, um, and it will not be covered, just an overview in this presentation. Again, suppository is another form of medication. Um, those are inserted into the rectum. There's special training also that is needed for this and will not be covered, but we just wanted to mention it. 